Hello everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to On Cashflow, where I help you become a master of your own cash flow. Now let's get started. The short answer to this video is replace your active income with passive income or semi-passive income. That's it. There is no mystery here. That is the alternative to the 4% rule. Why don't you just replace your active income with passive or semi-passive income? There you go. Thanks for watching. Okay, but seriously here, let me explain. <laughs> so that's really what this is. This alternative is. All you have to do is take what I consider active income, you having to go to work, you know, work a regular job, actively get paid for the work that you put in and replacing that with income that comes in almost regardless of what you do or you don't have to actively do it under a certain amount of time you know passive or semi-passive income okay so not all income is 100 passive but you have some that are 100 passive and you have some that are semi-passive like 90 percent or 80 percent you know you don't have to be there exactly and work you know this amount of time for this amount of pay that is kind of semi-passive income and if you really think about it really stop and think about it the four percent safe withdrawal rule or if you're using three percent or three point five percent or three point seven five percent or whatever if you're using a withdrawal rate like that, that essentially is the same thing. So is it really an alternative? Yes and no. Okay. But let me explain. If you're actually withdrawing money from your investments, you're taking, let's say 4%, you have a million dollars, you're taking 4%, $40,000, right? That's the easy math. You are creating a passive income stream. And in this case, you're selling off some of your investments with capital gains. You might be getting some interest from bonds. You might be getting dividends from some other stocks and all of this combined together creates $40,000 for yourself. So you're creating that passive income stream. So the 4% rule in effect is the same thing. Traditionally, it is consisting only of stocks and bonds, which means you're only gonna be getting dividends, capital gains, and interest. However, the alternative here is to introduce other kinds of passive or semi-passive income income sources. Now, what are those alternative income sources? Well, I'm so glad you asked. But first, I do want to note that the 4% rule in general, I think it's actually very perfectly fine to follow that. Regardless of what your ultimate goal is, I think that's a really good thing to shoot for to have like a 4% kind of mindset in mind. But I'll talk more about that at the end of the video, okay? Because it's going to tie into this very well. But first, let's talk about those alternative income sources. When I'm talking about alternative income sources, passive and semi-passive, I could be talking about a wide variety of things. But here are some pretty good ones rental income. If you have some rental properties or if you rent out something in your house or something similar to that, whatever you're renting out, if you're creating rental income for yourself, that is semi-passive income. Okay. And we can have varying levels of passiveness when it comes to rental income. You could have pretty much everything 100% outsourced where you barely have to manage anything. You don't have to manage day to day. You can have, you know, semi-passive income where you manage things yourself. However, that money is still going to be coming in. Only sometimes they're going to be, have to be something you deal with, but you don't have to directly, you know, trade your time for money by direct hours for direct pay kind of thing. There's a scale of rental income of how passive it is and how semi-passive it is. And then you could also go after much more passive income sources like bigger dividends or bigger amounts of interest. So for example, traditionally in the financial independence community, we do index funds and they pay, let's say 1.5 to 2% of a dividend rate. And that's very low, but you could go after, you know, higher paying dividend stocks or higher paying dividend index funds. And they could pay you, let's say 3% or three and a half percent. So double that in dividends. Now those are hundred percent passive. You don't actually have to put in any work and you will still receive those dividends. And then the same thing can be said about interest. Maybe instead of investing in a total bond fund that has a low amount of interest paid, you can invest in a slightly more aggressive bond fund that pays more interest. There's many different ways to earn interest, right? So a much higher interest as well than what a traditional total bond fund will pay. Another really good one, if you are the creative type and you like creating things, is royalty income. Because once you create something, okay, it's not passive at all while you're creating it, you know, while you're creating a book, while you're creating music, while you're creating, I don't know, art, <laughs> anything that you create that can generate royalties for yourself. It's not passive while you're doing it, but once it's created and once it's marketed, this can all be put on almost autopilot and you could theoretically receive, you know, royalties from that for a long time. So that is very semi-passive income right there. Another great one would actually be businesses. You could own a semi-passive business. There's lots of different, you know, popular business models out there that are semi-passive. If you own a car wash where people wash their own car and it's just a building where people come and they wash their own car. That could be semi-passive income. If you own a stream of vending machines and they're located throughout wherever you live, that could be semi-passive income if you have someone, you know, managing those vending machines for you. So there's lots of different kinds of businesses that can be semi-passive that you could own those businesses and create semi-passive income for yourself. And then one last one I have for you is become more and more popular and more and more realistic. And 
and that is actually a semi-passive job, believe it or not. <laughs> so theoretically, we think of all jobs as 100% active income. Like we have to work this many hours and we get paid this amount. But there are semi passive jobs out there and they're becoming more and more common with the stay at home kind of business model. If you work from home, you don't always have to work a certain amount of hours. You don't always have to work a certain time of the day. If you have a kind of job where you're it's just like project based or something like that, then you could do a semi passive job. You know, if you could do the work at any time and if you can work efficiently and work less hours, then you could theoretically have a semi passive job. So all of these you know ideas combined, and I'm sure there are plenty more, all these kinds of different income sources can be passive or semi my passive. And the goal of those is to replace 100% active income. Like, okay, I have to go to work from nine to five. I have to work the entire time and I get a certain amount of money from that. So that's 100% active income. And you want to replace that with these passive or semi-passive income sources. Of all of these passive income sources, I have one that is my favorite. And my favorite is hitting the like button on this video. <laughs> it is a very semi-passive income source because it only takes about a second of your time to hit that like button. However, it's going to pay you many, many dividends in the future because then the YouTube algorithm is going to know that you want to watch more of my videos and it's going to recommend more of my videos that are best fit for you. And then you can keep gaining and gaining and gaining. <laughs> so please hit that like button if you're enjoying this video so far. I would really appreciate that. Now that we know the best alternative to the 4% rule that we want to create passive income or semi-passive income to replace our active income, let's go through a example scenario because I love the examples and you probably love examples too. So this example scenario is going to take a variety of income sources, passive income and semi-passive income, and it's going to replace their active income. So let's say that you have a lifestyle where you spend $4,000 per month on average. That's about how much you need per month. So if we multiply that by 12, that should be about $48,000 per year. Once you have $4,000 of income that is passive and semi-passive, you no longer have to work at a job that earns at least $48,000 per year. You are now considered to be financially independent regardless of the 4% safe withdrawal rule. Here's a scenario of how you can replace that $4,000 of active income. Let's say you own six investment properties. Maybe they're single family homes, maybe they're small multifamily homes or whatever. Let's say you own these properties and they each produce about $300 of positive cash flow per month. If that was the case, then you should have about $1,800 of semi-passive income coming into your bank account from those rental properties. Let's also say that you have some money invested in your retirement accounts. Maybe you invest more for dividends. Maybe you invest a little bit in REITs or something like that. And you have an average dividend yield of around 3%. If you have three $360,000 in your retirement account and you're getting an average dividend yield of 3%, that means you should be getting paid about $875 per month. Of course, it's not going to get paid out every single month, but you get the idea. So then you can add that to your other semi-passive income. And now you can see you're getting closer and closer to your $4,000. Now let's add one more semi-passive income source in here to pretty much seal the deal. Let's say you buy a passive income business. You buy a vending machine business. You buy a laundromat. You buy a car wash. Whatever it may be, let's say you have a semi-passive business and it brings in you a profit of about $1,500 per month. Now very conveniently, all of those numbers are going to add up to be more than $4,000. How did that happen? <laughs> but seriously, they do add up to be more than $4,000 per month. And by using this alternative, you are now financially independent, regardless of what the 4% safe withdrawal rule says. And that's because you have your income from your rental properties, you have some income from your dividends, and you have some income from your semi-passive business. In the essence, you have a lot of free time now. You are, by any definition, you've got to be financially independent at this point, because you have more than $4,000 of passive or semi-passive income that can replace your need to work actively for income. And this is what leads me to the big question here. I want to know from you in the comments below. How are you planning to do your financial independence? Are you planning on only using the 4% safe withdrawal rule or something similar to that, like a withdrawal rule where you create 100% passive income from, let's say, paper investments? Or are you trying to do the other way, create semi-passive income sources or passive income sources that just replace the amount of spending that you need or some kind of combination of the two? Please let me know in the comments below. I'm really curious to know. And then once you're done leaving that comment below, if you're serious about getting started on the path to financial independence, if you're serious about just you know, getting a plan in place, then you need to watch another video that I created because I created a complete guide for you to getting started on the path to financial independence and just getting your plan in place. So please watch that video if you haven't already, okay? It's gonna pop up on the screen right after I get off the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Zach from oncashflow.com and I hope to see you next time.